floor game. Floor game. Oh, that's my cat. <laughs> on the floor because floor gang um I have a very weird interesting topic today and that's movie theaters and how Trolls World Tour kind of destroyed them <laughs> and how kind of ironic that is because um this is the movie okay this is the movie that made trolls have become centaurs. This is the movie that made trolls have half of a horse's body. My guy, <laughs> it's just so funny how like Trolls World Tour, okay, has shook the entertainment industry, at least for movies. It has, it, the movie industry is not, not feeling it, okay? Um, at least for theaters, they're not feeling it. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, a movie cinema chain, I got my notes here, cinema chain called um, AMC has kind of declared war on <laughs> Universal because Universal, as everyone knows, they release Trolls World Tour um, straight to On Demand or um, PVOD, Premium Video On Demand. That's what they did. Instead of posting it, posting it, instead of sending it out to theaters because, well, everyone is in quarantine, so people aren't going to the movie theaters, right? So they're, so, Universal didn't want to lose money, <laughs> so they're like, okay, we're going to scrap together and just put it straight on demand for 20 bucks. I watched it with my dad. It was awesome to see his reactions um, to Centaur Trolls. It was great. And the movie did really well. <laughs> That's the big kicker here. It did really, really well. And AMC didn't like that. And um, that... Universal decided to do this, and basically AMC, the cinema um, movie theater chain, is kind of like, is this going to continue? Are you going to keep putting uh, movies straight on demand after this pandemic is over? Because, you know, that's, you're, me you're messing with their profits, because theaters, according to this article, theaters, you know, are around mostly because they kind of have this exclusivity to movies. They have access to them before on demand straight to home services, right? And without that, you don't really need to go to the theater and to see it before everyone else sees it at least. And that's what they're really getting at is that, um, Universal put out Trolls World Tour, and AMC's not happy about it. And AMC basically said, you know what? F you, <laughs> um, Universal. Uh, we, we won't show any of your movies anymore because you did this. And uh, <laughs> yeah, mm, and that kind of sparked... This is sending waves out there, you know. So now there's this fight, right? And I want to talk about my opinion about first movie theaters and this particular situation. Because since uh, Trolls World Tour did really well, the numbers are a little um, iffy because I, don't, I guess they haven't come out with them yet. Again, this is, article was from like a week ago, so it's not going to be 100% um, accurate. Um... Okay, so in terms of this particular situation, um, gotta put on my glasses so I feel smart. In terms of this particular situation, AMC has does not have the upper hand. Like, it, it's acting as if, oh, we're not gonna show your movies in our theaters anymore, blah, blah, blah. Bro, 
Universal has all the cards. I don't know what you're talking about. Like they, they're the ones who are, you know, making these movies and you not showing them isn't going to stop them from making them. Like Universal has the cards, obviously. From this whole scenario, it's obvious that Universal has all the cards. And one thing that people are saying um, about it is that the numbers are more in Universal's favor because a bunch of people are at home already and, you know, kids are at home and this is a kid's movie, so it kind of was coincident coincidental. I don't know if that's the right word, but like it was the success wasn't completely like it was straight to consumer. That wasn't like the main th thing that Universal would possibly continue after the pandemic. Do you know what I'm saying? Here's the direct quote for what I just said in a way better phrase. The National so Association of Theater Owners said to Tuesday... The sales figures are the result of millions of people being quarantined, heavy, heavy marketing by Universal, not changing audience preferences. So I disagree with that in all honesty, because they try and make the claim that um, theaters provide a beloved, immersive, shared experience that cannot be replicated. I disagree with that, because after this thing's over... I'd rather invite my friends over to my house to watch a movie than go to the movie theaters because since sophomore year, I rarely go to movie theaters. And there's a couple of reasons why. One, kids. I don't like kids in movie theaters. I don't like kids in general. <laughs> but um, kids in movie theaters just aren't great because they're loud. They cry. They get their food everywhere. They kick your seat. People in general kick your seat. That's so freaking annoying when people kick your seat. And if you're at home, you don't have to worry about any real interruptions. Unless, like, you know, other people live in your home and they're, like, doing their business. But you know what I mean? Like, in comparison to the movie theater, the... There's a car. Thank you. In comparison, you have more control over your home environment than the theater because in the theater, there's possibly, what, like 50 other random people you don't know. And there's something kind of weird about that. I just don't like being in a group of people I don't know for like a couple hours. And I, I just don't like it. You know, if I want to see someone's reaction, I'll go on YouTube and watch like a reaction channel a couple months later. I just don't. I just don't see how people are like, oh, the theater's an immersive experience because, you know, I get like for for thriller movies and like action movies, that makes a lot of sense. But if we're talking about like Trolls World Tour, it's better to watch it at home because you don't have to deal with all these kids. If you want your friends to come over, um, you can just invite them. You don't have to like meet them there and then, da -da -da, you know, like, and at home you can like, the popcorn's cheaper, you know? <laughs> um, you get the microwavable popcorn that um, is supposed to taste like movie theater popcorn, and it's, like, better than, what, $20 popcorn. Um, it's also um, PVOD um, movies. It's, it's It was $20, like, flat fee. It's a flat fee. It's not like you're paying, like, what, 10 to $15 per person, which, God, it's like, that's a lot of money. It's just a large investment to go to the movie theater, but if you wanted, this could be $20 for multiple people to watch a movie. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't, I think with entertainment becoming more personalized and more, like, um, customizable, if that's the right word, with, like, Netflix and all these other things where you don't have to watch ads and stuff like that, because I hate watching ads. That's another thing. When I turn on my TV and watch table, because I have, like, a mini TV in my room, I can't stand it because I can't stand ads. The only ads I watch are YouTube ads, which are usually skip ads, where I don't have to watch all of it. So, and I watch Netflix, and obviously... Netflix doesn't have ads, so I I think we're, I think this, um, there's a quote. I think, um, 
Universal does not have reason to use uni unusual circumstances to an unprecedented environment as a springboard to bypass true theatrical release. I disagree with that 100% because, you know what? Crisis, war, I'm not comparing this pandemic to a war, but like there, any kind of like rattling of a society will do will either accelerate or decelerate trends that are already happening. And there has been a trend since Netflix of movies, of, of, of movie theaters just becoming obsolete or becoming a totally different thing than they are now. Because um, I wasn't, I, I hardly remember Blockbuster video and, and um, what, Redbox or whatever. I don't even know their names that well. And Netflix, Put them out of business. Why? Because the entertainment movie industry is changing. And I, I understand that people, like the same dude, what, John Fithian, is like, theaters provide a beloved, immersive, shared experience that cannot be replicated. I just disagree with that because if you really wanted, you could replicate that same environment for cheaper with um, this PVOD format of... Um, putting movies out there, you know? And I think, I, I still think it's funny how it's Trolls World Tour. I know someone else already said that. I'll link the video in the description. But it's Trolls World Tour that's breaking the movie theater industry. Like that's, that's just amazing on so many levels that the, uh, I just love that so much. Also, one other point is that studios through this on-demand service, like, um, Theaters usually take half of the cut of the movie or whatever through box offices, the box office. But on this on-demand service, they only take 20%. So to me, you know, Universal doing this has, um, it, they're not the only one. Disney is releasing a new movie on Disney Plus and Warner Brothers is also planning to release the kids um, film Scoob for on-demand home viewing rather than in theaters. That's so smart. To me, kids' movies, um, like straight to on-demand, to me, just makes so much more sense because I think if I were a parent taking my kids in general, not even just like during the pandemic, even though you can't go to the movie theater because they're closed, but as a parent, after this thing's over, like I wouldn't want to take my kids to the movie theaters. Like that's just gross. If you're it's just gross, okay? Because movie theaters, you go in with your kid, you know, and you're around, what, 50 other kids, maybe a full theater, you know? Like, it's just kind of like the seat has been sat in by tons of other people, and you just come out of this phase where people were super germophobic, and you're just like, and you're with your kid, and you want your kid to be healthy. And in general, before this pandemic, it was kind of like, I would still say if I were a parent, I wouldn't really want to take my kids to the movie theater because it's just inconvenient and a little bit gross because you're touching things that have been touched by tons of people, you know, and around little kids and little kids, you know, they, uh, they don't always wash their hands, you know, in a variety of situations. So, um, to me, I think what's going to happen is that Trolls World Tour, it was a kids movie. I enjoyed it. I know that some of the commentators, commentators, commentating channels I watched didn't like it. And I was like, bro, it's great. Like, I love this movie. But at the same time, I think that it's first going to be kids movies because kids and parents, like that whole dynamic, as I just explained, I think um, on demand streaming on demand viewing is just a better option than going to the movie theater and it can be replicated and i think movie theaters thinking that they have something proprietary like something that's so special is going to be their downfall because i understand that some theaters have tried to make the experience more interactive but at the same time i just don't see why i would go to the movie theater for Trolls World Tour. Hello. <laughs> um, why I would go to the movie theater um, 
if I could just watch it at home. I think that Universal doing this is very smart, and I think it's just kind of inevitable. Can you not? Thank you. Um, that's my video. Uh, I think that movie theaters need to get their head out of their ass. I and as I was saying, like, I. I understand that movie theaters have tried to make the experience more immersive by like the moving seats and stuff, but I just don't, I, I think that eventually movie theaters will just be obsolete or there'll be something completely different than they are now that I just can't really predict. So anyway, that's my video. Um, Trolls World Tour, f I was about to say five out of five. No, 10 out of 10 guys. It was so good. You should go watch it. Um, AMC can't bring my troll's spirit down, all right? Um, that's my video. Um, I hope all of you guys are doing, um, well during this kind of weird period of time, and, um, I'm very excited. Um, I don't know what, what I'm excited for, but, um, I'm excited to be here and to be talking to you guys because um, we recently hit 100 subscribers and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> to me that was a big deal. I know that for some people, oh, you just got 100 subscribers, like, like that's so stupid. And it's like, for me, it's not. For me, that's a big deal because I'm just here talking about what interests me and I don't really fall, I don't, I like to think that I don't follow trends and stuff and I don't, I don't make videos specifically because I think they'll get a great view count. I make them because I want to make them and I really hope that people watch it. I might brand it differently so that people, uh, more people watch it, but that's just because I really do enjoy the videos that I make. Hello. <laughs> I do enjoy the videos that I make and um, it's just, it's really weird for me to be like, oh, there's a hundred people that watch me. That's just kind of, that's just cool to me. I, um, anyway, thank you guys for that. I really appreciate it. Can't wait to hit 200 with you guys. Um, and I will see you guys later. Bye.